the Wattbox 820 PDU and 2000 VA UPS have been running in the rack for a little while now. All of my audio, video, and home theater gear is running off of this power management system, this power delivery system, and this UPS, including even the amps and everything like that. Check out the first video that I did where I kind of like did the unboxing, the hot look, the first take, did the installation and got all of the initial setup done. In this video though, we're gonna do a little bit of power metering, a little bit of power measuring, and get an idea how much power does all of this stuff actually take to use? What kind of consumption are we looking at? Again, this UPS is based on a 2000 VA power delivery. Uh, so we're gonna turn on various elements of the system. We're gonna play some content in those zones. We're gonna use the gaming PC as well. We'll get some movies cranked up really loud in the home theater. And let's see, are we tapping out this UPS? Should we not be running the amps on here? What happens when we turn stuff on versus when we are kind of running at a bit of a steady state? Let's explore this together and we'll see if any additional changes are actually necessary in the Techthusiasm rack as a result of this. So I have quite a bit of equipment, of course, running uh, here in the system. This is a full-size double rack. We've got a gaming PC. We've got uh, multiple preamplifiers for both the living room and the home theater. We've got three NAD Class D amplifiers. We've got a Kaleidoscape system with a Strato and a Terra server. I've got a Mad VR NV Extreme Mark II. There's basically two computers running this rack. We've got subwoofer amplifiers, actually, rack-mounted subwoofer amplifiers for the two in-wall subs up in the living room. We have a distributed audio amp here with the Anthem MDX-16. We've got Control 4 stuff. I've got my Umatello in there uh, and all of the Ubiquiti networking equipment. My living room setup is also power extended down here to the rack. So the Apple TV that's up there, well, as well as the home theater's Apple TV that's in the rack. Uh, my Nintendo Switch, right now the PS5 Pro is still up there as well. And that LG television. All of that stuff is plugged in here. And of course, per the original video, we have a 20 amp dedicated circuit, properly wired, providing all of that juicy power to this rack. And so, let's again see, are we overloading this thing? Is it too much demand? And how does it all work out? So, I will point out right now, uh, we are running okay. And nominally speaking, kind of steady state with a lot of things turned off. This is pretty consistent. We pop back and forth here between 16 and 17% load. So what's driving this initial load? Well, of course, we have some passive equipment and we have some active equipment. We see a lot of things are in standby, but they're still taking a little bit of power, right? All of our devices do actually consume some power in standby. The amps are waiting for triggers to turn on. A lot of the equipment is waiting for like a wake on LAN or a control for IP based uh, command or signal in order to turn on. So all of that stuff though is actually off at the moment. The things that are actively running though, the things that are actively running is the Synology NAS, that's a DS1812 with seven, uh, seven of the eight hard drive bays occupied. Of course, all of the new Ubiquiti equipment is running in the rack right now, fully powered on. That's the cable modem, that's the Dream Machine, that's the Enterprise switch uh, up there and providing power over ethernet, of course, uh, to the access point that's sitting on the main floor of the house in the office. The Kaleidoscape Terra is running. That's an always online device, always ready to connect to Kaleidoscape servers, get a download trigger, bring movies down, stuff like that. Control 4 controller. This is an EA5, always running, always ready, always connected. The MDX is not actually playing audio to any given zone right now, but again, always on, always ready, always listening. The UMA there is always on as well. So that baseline, that flat line of all of that kind of passive always on equipment plus the latent things waiting for their commands, their triggers, their power ons, is putting us at 16 to 17%. Lots of headroom. All right, so the first thing that I wanna try out here, let's, let's start small. We'll start with the Anthem MDX. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn on uh, an airplay zone in the household. I'm gonna turn on to play some audio to the kitchen. Notice we just went from red to blue. We're still sitting here at 17%. And I'm gonna go ahead and play some Apple Music to that zone upstairs. Zone one, uh, just powered on there. We got two lights now, so we have signal in, we have output playing. I can actually hear it upstairs. I've got it turned up pretty loud, playing uh, AirPlay, Apple Music from my phone to that MDX, and we barely, we barely move the needle here. Uh, we've gone from bouncing back and forth between 16 and 17 percent to 17 slash 18 percent. Let's move on to something bigger, right? Probably what's really going to be some of the biggest power draw in the system. We're going to turn on the theater. We're gonna see what kind of 
power on spike we may get as these amplifiers trigger on. We'll see where we go to in terms of a steady state. And then we'll start some playback of a movie in there. And we'll crank up that volume pretty loud. Really get these amps uh, pumping out some power. See what happens. So I've got my Control 4 Halo here set to the theater. We're going to go ahead and pop it on. 18%. Power on spike. 20, 24, 25, 40. Now the amps are kicking on. 75. 75 is where we peaked out there. And looks like we're settling in here around 30%. 28, 29. The amps are powering up. We're at 30, 31. The AVM 90 is on. The Mad VR is powered on. The Kaleidoscape, I did go to the Kaleidoscape uh, Strato here. That's powered on 31%, 30%. The projector is turning on. I should note, though, that the NZ900 projector in the other room and the four uh, SVS SB16 subwoofers that I have, they are not on this UPS, and nor are they even on the same circuit. Again, 20 amp dedicated circuit to the things that are plugged in through the rack and that other equipment over there in the theater room itself is not plugged in on the circuit. I actually have a separate dedicated 20 amp, uh, 20 amp power delivery power circuit for that room on its own. So we've creeped up here a little bit more. We're at 37. At this point, I think everything should be on. We should have picture uh, showing in the other room. Again, 37%. Steady state, navigating the UI, no audio playing, of course, it's silent in the room right now. It's just sitting at the Kaleidoscape movie wall, 37%. I'm going to start up a movie, and we're going to crank up some volume. We'll see what we can drive this usage to. I think it was interesting, though, that we did we did pop up there, right? 75%, a little bit of a spike. That's these amps turning on, getting some initial, I think, some power draw, filling up capacitors, right? Filling up some power reserves, everything that they need to do. I think that, that begs one thing that actually could probably be system optimized, which is if you have multiple amplifiers, right, or you have some ability to kind of delay the turn on of your devices versus everything kind of powering on at the same time and like rushing its initial spike of power on uh, to begin with, it's good to have some, uh, good, good to have some delays, some sequencing and some delays of that. I think if we would have turned the, say, uh, other components on, waited a second, turned on amp one, waited a second, turned on amp two, we wouldn't have peaked up to anywhere near, I think, 75%. So that's one of the things that I may end up doing, actually. Uh, with the Wattbox 820, I do have individual like power outlet control. Maybe instead of triggering the amps off of the Anthem, I may be able to actually like trigger them or control their power state with control four, add some delays that way programmed in. But we'll see what happens there. In any case, let's get a movie started and let's see what kind of power usage uh, load we're putting on this thing when we're actually watching a movie. All right, here we go. I got the scene started in the other room there. You might hear a little bit of noise, a little bit of rumble in the background. I went for something bombastic, Ready Player One race scene, and we haven't even moved the needle. We're playing audio at a, at a, at a decent listening volume, let's say, uh, in the room over there. We're at 37, 36%, 38% top load. Now I'm going to crank it. I'm going to crank up our audio. For reference, we are at minus 40, minus 40 on the anthem volume. I'm going to get this thing down to probably a good minus 10. Right, so pretty interesting data there, I think, basically. Um, it really needed some significant volume uh, increase before we really even started ticking up much on the load there. As we went from minus 40 to into the minus 30s, we started maybe getting a little more towards like 40% load, a little more over 40% load. 
definitely once we got down to minus 20, we were seeing some spikes. And then at minus 15, certainly minus 10, that's way louder than I even listen to the system. I don't think I would watch a movie at minus 10. Uh, minus 15, maybe if I'm by myself, minus 20 if I'm with the family. But our, our highest peak there, which I think actually corresponded in the Ready Player One sequence with the Tyrannosaurus Rex stopping down his foot, I could definitely hear it. It was loud in there. Everything in here in the room adjacent is shaking and rumbling. We didn't even hit 70%. Uh, but I think it is a good lesson, though, that if running so much as I am uh, on the single UPS, I think I would need to be careful about multi-zonal use, perhaps. Doing something loud and very power consumption, maybe high-end PC gaming loud in the living room. At the same time, somebody is in the home theater blasting something really loud. Might need to be a little bit protective against that. We could be peeking out some load. But let's actually see what the living room pulls when we set it up, run some stuff in there. All right, first in the living room, we'll test some media playback. Then we'll switch over to the gaming. I am going to just leave the home theater side on. There's nothing playing in there. So it's just steady state. We're steady state here, about 35, 36% load. We're going to turn on the living room. This is going to power on the Anthem STR. It's powering up right now. It'll trigger these amps in just a second. There we go. The rack amps have turned on. The NED is getting its trigger. We've got 44%. So not really much of a, of a rush, an onrush there that I noticed peaking out maybe um, a little bit above the mid 40s and this is everything again this is a, an 83 inch television uh, anthem str and nadm 23 two rack amps and an apple tv powered up and we've gone up uh, barely about five percent we've added about five percent load to the system so i'm going to run up there i'm going to get some playback a movie started we'll play around with some volume control in the living room see where we end up So there you saw some Ready Player One playing that was using the Apple TV, not the Kaleidoscape. Um, pretty loud volume. I had the Anthem STR volume all the way down to minus 15, which is really loud, <laughs> really loud for our living room. And we barely, I don't think we even broke 50%, um, even in the larger stomping Tyrannosaurus uh, elements and sequences of that scene. And that's running subwoofers too. Now these are not subwoofers on the order of the, the SVSs and stuff that are, of course, in the theater room which aren't running on this anyway, uh, but they're still 10 inch subs in walls. They, they, they have a little bit of impact. They add a little bit of oomph, but as we can see, running amps, even subwoofer amps like this, uh, reasonable scale now, on this thing, we're good to go. We're, we're not even at half capacity. All right, now let's, let's, add, in, let's add in the gaming PC. So the, uh, to date, everything that I've shown so far, the gaming PC has been completely off. Uh, per my using the gaming PC as a console in the living room type videos, uh, I, I completely remove power from the gaming PC when it's not in use. So we're going to turn it on uh, here via Control 4, which is going to restore power to the outlet that the PC is plugged into. It's going to boot up, and we'll see where we end up for uh, power on of the computer. Then we'll actually run a game, like a, a high-end game, 4K, high settings, 120 FPS, high GPU utilization, and we'll see where we get to. So let's start it up. I just heard it click. Uh, 43, 44, 45, 46. Topping out, oh, 70. Ooh, PC's pulling some power now. PC is definitely pulling some power now. Back down to 45, 46. So uh, I think that PC has an 850 watt power supply in it. Uh, that's a 4090 GPU. That's an Intel 11900K CPU. So we're 52, 53. This is definitely gonna be something that's gonna take some more power. 60s, in the 60s, everything just uh, kicked up up there. Now we're in the 60s. Windows is booting, things are still kind of uh, kind of starting up. I'll be back in a few minutes. We'll see where we are steady state and then we'll get into a game. All right, so here we are steady state with the PC. It's all booted up. It's basically sitting at the, the Steam big picture mode, launcher view, 
and we're we're in the low 50s between 50 and 55 percent it's going to be really interesting to see what happens uh, if the next pc build ends up down here on this ups uh, 5090 computer uh, a 9800 x3d cpu probably looking at like needing to step up to like a 1300 watt power supply we may be we may be tapping out or we may end up uh, in a situation where we can't be doing loud home theater watching and pc gaming at the same time but again steady state right around 50 percent now after the boot up we saw some pretty big spikes there i'm going to go back upstairs really quick i'm going to start a game and here we are in game up there spider-man remastered uh maxed out running like 120 fps ray tracing turned on i got uh, peter parker spider-man sitting kind of up on the side of a building looking out over the city all kinds of lighting effects stuff like that going on and we're pretty much set here at 65 percent 65 percent power consumption so in game versus out of game burning an extra uh, putting an extra 15 percent load here on to the ups unfortunately i'm home by myself uh, recording this i would like to pr i prefer to have my son actually playing a game moving around in the environment uh, having some audio things more audio cues and stuff going on but hey i do what i can do so that's where we're at apologize if the noise the uh, fan noise made this a harder video to watch i'll see if i can do anything in post to reduce some of that background noise but we got a lot of stuff with fans going now especially the pcs burning up there the switches the nas the ups itself makes some noise it's getting hot in here i can feel this room um, getting warm anyway i can feel this room starting to heat up a bit but so what did this tell us well i guess it tells me i'm pretty happy with this watt box power stuff uh 20 amp circuit 200 va ups uh, i feel really good i feel that this is very capable of using the system in any way that i'm going to use it uh, even let's say lighter multi-zone use will be completely fine i can definitely crank if i want to uh, in the theater uh, and we're not tapping out we're not hitting load capacity on this ups at all again gaming up there by far the biggest consistent uh, steady state power draw within the system is still well within the capabilities of the ups and again we left everything on that whole time uh, as we kept compounding what was being run what was being turned on within the system as it is right now i don't think there's anything plugged in on this circuit that's technically not powered on at the moment i guess it may be the ps5 pro but we're never going to use the ps5 pro and the gaming pc at the same time in fact the ps5 pro is just going to be going back to the store uh more on that in another video so pretty sweet stuff i am super happy i'm super glad that i made this upgrade uh, maybe i can work again with some of like the power on timings power on management uh, delay control something along those lines but hey even if i didn't do that we're still good uh, even the power on load of the theater was nowhere near tapping us out on the load of the ups i have watched some content i have turned some things up in the theater i don't think that anything is starved for power i don't think these amps are not getting what they need running through the ups so i'm pretty happy with the whole thing sound off in the comments let me know do you have a ups do you actually run your amps on it what kind of system what kind of load uh let me know let me know what you got let me know how it's working for you have you ever overloaded a ups i definitely can say when i had the bigger stack of three parasound amps running on the lower capacity cyber power it couldn't do it the cyber power would actually trip it would beep like protection mode overload mode but this guy 20 amp power is doing the job if you're interested in any of this stuff i am a snap one snap av dealer i can sell watt box i can sell these ups's i can sell these pdus i'm using them i like them i stand by them i highly recommend them reach out if you're interested jeremy at techthusiasm.net or just go to www .techthusiasm.net reach out through the contact form happy to talk consult advise we can spec some stuff out for you whether it's wattbox kaleidoscape a jvc projector panamorph sony lg or a whole bunch of other things i carry a whole bunch of brands happy to give my guidance happy to give my advice happy to give a recommendation and if i can't help you i have business partners like audio advice and others that i can directly refer you to uh, that can if you'd like to help support me in other ways hey become a channel member leave a super thanks paypal venmo tip shop with all my other affiliates newegg walmart target uh, there's a whole laundry list of them down in the description they're all there use those links please when you do your shopping especially this holiday season always much appreciated if you would like subscribe hit the bell share the video leave a comment let's discuss power management in our home audio video setup i'm talking so much i ran the battery out on my sony cameras so we'll wrap this up with a final thank you thanks for watching come on back for more home theater discussion and fun